Eight health stations line the walkway for people to visit. Each station demonstrates a different principle for health, from fresh air to exercise. Visitors get a holistic look at healthy living and learn firsthand how to practice these concepts in their own lives. Young Adventists in Georgia created a group called Reflect. The main goal of Reflect is for Adventist youth to meet other young people and build good relationships. We want to bring more youth to God. We chose the name Reflect because we want to show the youth how to shine and reflect good, positive things. With One Global Mission Pioneer's help, Reflect continues to grow as they co-host events such as art programs, movie nights, and community outreach activities like this health expo. Just before an event like this starts, young Adventists split into groups and invite people throughout the neighborhood to visit the expo. After the final station, people find out more about opportunities to connect with Adventists. Many of the attendees leave their feedback, sharing that they appreciated learning new ways to live healthfully. Events like this help build relationships and are strengthened by having a good reputation among the people. Global Mission pioneers, like Taya, open doors to the community. Because of the relationships she built, many people came to learn about what the Health Expo had to offer. Aside from health, Taya also found that the local children were eager to learn about the Bible. So she created a series of Bible lessons and held weekly studies with the kids. This program is only 12 lessons, but the kids wanted to continue. They felt sad that they had completed all the lessons, so I had to create more for them. On this Sabbath morning, Taya is holding a graduation ceremony for everyone who completed this round of Bible studies. The youth proudly demonstrate the things they learned through songs, skits, and reciting memory verses. Some of their family members even came to show their support. Soon many of these young graduates will connect with the Reflect group so they can continue being the hands and feet of Jesus and find fellowship and service. Taya's efforts, along with the work of hundreds of Global Mission pioneers around the world, are winning young people to God's kingdom. Thank you for your continued prayers and selfless gifts. Please consider how you can support pioneers like Taya through faithful giving to Global Mission. Thank you very much for supporting Global Mission and projects like these. So, uh, just an interesting uh, uh, idea for witnessing doesn't involve renting a building or uh, uh, any it looks like any big expense. Just kind of getting things set up and then actually going out and getting people, uh, inviting people to uh, learn more about the health message and in the process they become interested in studying the Bible as well. Well, uh, last week uh, we talked a little bit about Hurricane Dorian and uh, this um, picture just uh, really caught my eye. This was from the New York Times uh, down on Grand Bahama Island, I believe it was. It was one of the two islands that was really badly affected by Hurricane Dorian. And uh, this week we have a short uh, uh, news report from Adventist News Network about what the uh, church is doing uh, in the Bahamas right now. Nearly a week after Hurricane Dorian destroyed everything in sight in Grand Bahama and Abaco Islands in the Bahamas, Seventh-day Adventist leaders are slowly receiving word about the whereabouts of their members. As the storm tapered off, the devastation was immense. Families have been left stranded in their homes, knee-deep in high-rise water levels, while countless others have been left homeless. At the time of this recording, the official death toll remains at 44, but there is no estimate of how many people are unaccounted for, and many fear that number will go up significantly. 
Uh, so far, the church has confirmed one death among, in the, among the membership in Grand Bahama. In Abaco, all members have been accounted for, but many are seriously injured and are in hospitals in Nassau. Michael Smith, Communication Director for the Adventist Church in the Atlantic Caribbean Union said, we know that 90% of the infrastructure in both islands have mm. been destroyed and some evacuations have taken place during the past few days. Our pastoral families have come through, and th come through the storm and they are of good courage. Church members in Grand Bahama moved into action and have engaged in immediate community service catering to the public. Some 400 hot meals are being distributed every day. On September 6, as a group of 400 people evacuated from Abaco, members of the Adventist Layman Services and Industries chapter of the South Bahamas Conference joined with the team of buses to transport those people to government facilities. The Atlantic Caribbean Union has reported that Grand Bahama Academy in Freeport was affected by flooding, but the school should be running up and running again soon. However, most of the teachers' and students' homes have been destroyed or at least damaged. Some students from Freeport, Grand Bahama, have already transferred to the South Bahamas Academy in Nassau to resume their classes while recovery efforts take place back home. As soon as Hurricane Dorian made its landing in the North Bahamas, Jose A. Rodriguez, president in the church of the church in Puerto Rico, moved quickly to collect funds to assist those affected in the Atlantic Caribbean territory. Rodriguez said, we have already sent some funds to assist church members affected by Dorian and will continue to send funds to assist all victims on the two islands. The plan is to support a soup kitchen in Grand Bahama and Abaco indefinitely. For more information on what the Adventist Church is doing in the Bahamas, visit interamerica.org or adra.org. So just a reminder that if we would like to assist our brothers and sisters in the Bahamas and really all the people there who uh, have lost so much, that a, an easy way to do this is to go to adra.org uh, online or just search for ADRA on any search engine and you'll find it. And you can donate there or you can put an offering, uh, an offering in the offering envelope uh, here at church and it will get to ADRA. So uh, just a reminder uh, of, of kind of a, a current problem that we all need to uh, participate in helping solve. So it's now time for us to separate into our classes. We have our usual classes, one here in the sanctuary, one in the boardroom, uh, one in the prayer room, uh, and one in the um, uh, library, and then one in the Pathfinder room. So let's bow our heads for prayer before we separate for our classes. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for the privilege of serving you. And we just ask today that your Holy Spirit will be with us as we study, uh, as we study about the uh, hope of the Advent uh, and the place that, that has in our relationship to other people around us, uh, especially those who are in need. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen.
morning everyone all right that sounds good you can hear me there all right God is good and all the time no matter what's going on in your life he's always good right so let's open up with another word of prayer and we'll get into the lesson Heavenly Father Lord we're so thankful for you once again for bringing us to yet another week Lord thank you for your blessed Sabbath day Lord, I pray that you would have me behind the cross as we go through your lesson. And most of all, Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Open our hearts and minds to receive the word that you have us to receive this morning. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Living the Advent Hope is our lesson for this morning. You ever wondered or just asked yourself, why am I a seven-day Adventist? Why, why am I a Seventh-day Adventist? Why are you here? Is it because your parents are Seventh-day Adventists? Is it because you're a third or fourth generation Adventist? What's the reason? Is it, well, hold, hold that question. I'm going to build up to it. Is it solely because you found out about the Sabbath and you needed to go to church on the Sabbath? Is that it? Or, more of a valid point, did the Lord lead you into some truths that you could not refute? And because you love him with all your heart, mind, and soul, seven-day Advent, seven Adventism is where he led you. And now because you have obeyed the voice of the Lord by faith, you are here. That sound, that sound more accurate right there? <laughs> okay. So what does, it lead, what does it mean to live the, ad, the Advent hope? What is it all about? Well, let me break down some definitions for you. Advent basically means the arrival of a notable person, thing, or an event. Hope is a feeling of expectation or a desire for a certain thing to happen. Okay? So you put both of those together, Advent hope, you are anticipating for something to happen. Put it in more of, of layman terms, you're, in, you're anticipating the second coming of Christ. Amen? I'm going to read this statement at the bottom of the introduction lesson on uh, page 137. It says, by definition, Adventists are those who await this coming and this kingdom. I'm talking about Christ. These are people of hope. But this hope is not only about a future new world. While hope looks to the future, hope transforms the present now. That's a key point. Hope transforms the present now. With such hope, we live in the present as we expect to in the future. And we begin, listen to this point here, we begin working to make a difference now in ways that fit with how we expect the world will one day be we're going to we're going to be talking about a particular phrase actually we can go there now to sunday's lesson uh, sunday's lesson but on monday's lesson we're going to be talking about a, a specific phrase um, called escape escapism escape ex, it's called escapism interesting word but we're going to break it down here when we get to monday's lesson so let's look at sunday Actually, before we, before we go there, I'm going to go back to the introduction. I'm going to look at the memory verse. Um, you guys know who Brother Randy Skeet is? Pastor Randy Skeet, you ever heard of him? Never have? Well, he, well, he talks about reading the word microscopically, really zooming in on what the Lord is saying. So look, listen to the memory text, and I want you to think about it microscopically. Coming from 1 Corinthians 15, 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So you got to ask yourself, now when we look at the, the word, when we look at this verse microscopically, you can ask a couple of questions. What does it mean to abound in the work? 
and what does it mean that my the labor that I'm doing is not going to be in vain so keep that in mind as we go through this lesson we're going to look at what we're going to study this morning microscopically how long O oh Lord how long O oh Lord is the Sunday's lesson so as we look at this world today have you ever just said in your in your spirit in your in your mind how long O oh Lord will you delay your coming I'm tired I'm ready to go home everybody am I the only one <laughs> we've all been there right at first glance, it may look and feel like the enemy has the upper hand, right? But God is still in control. You believe that? He's still in control. The question is, how long will you, how long, O oh Lord, will you allow havoc to take place on this earth? I believe God has already given us answers in his word. But, Here's a key point here. We must first take a look at why this world is the way it is. So let's 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 see why this world is the way it is. Go to Isaiah 59 with me. And the first two verses is the reason that the world is the way it is. Isaiah 59, starting at verse 1 get there say amen Isaiah 59 says verse 1 behold the Lord's hand now listen to this microscopically now behold the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save stop right there is the Lord extending his hand to save that's the, that's the question you got to ask yourself when you look at it deeper into the scripture he is extending his hand to this world to save it. But what's, what's the issue? Neither his, he, neither his ear heavy that he cannot hear. He's trying, he's hearing. He sees and hears everything, right? But here's the issue. We're talking about how, how long, O Lord. Verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. That's the issue. That is why we are in the problem that we're in today. Now, I want to read to you now a remedy. Okay? And then a promise. Let's look at the remedy. Second Chronicles 7 verse 14. And I'm going to have a participant read that if you get that. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. This is the remedy right here. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Anyone have that? How long, O Lord? Okay. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land amen thank you brother so what is the remedy according to that verse repentance what else if my people who are called by my name will do what humble themselves Jesus said in the Gospels, I believe it was Matthew, he said, those who humble themselves shall, be, shall what? Be exalted. Right? Yes. If we're doing the work, why are we praying to God? What are we praying to God for? We're doing the work. We're the foot soldiers. So why are we praying to God? To do what? Okay, good question. To thank him for giving us the ability to do that. Sometimes we think all our prayers, we're asking for something. I want this, I want that. That's not the way it started out. You're thanking the Lord for the blessings that he's given us. And in the, as you were talking about the lesson the different times it talks to people in slavery. Children of Israel didn't get taken into slavery unless they left the Lord. That's the only time they got in trouble. 
but as long as they were following him, everything went smooth for them. I see your head first, Pastor. I would imagine the question that we should ask is, was Jesus a foot soldier? Was he doing the work? And how did he stay in contact with his father? Um, we see in Mark chapter 1 that Jesus rose. He's God himself. He's our example. He rose a great while before day, and he went into a solitary place and there prayed. I just want to read to you something why, why even though you were a foot soldier, why, it is it, why is it critical to be in constant communion? Because I'm looking for it so I don't misquote it. I know what it says. But I want you to read or hear in Mark chapter 1 when Jesus was there praying. The Bible says in verse 36, And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Now listen to this. They're talking to to the foot soldier everyone is looking for you and he said to them let us go to the next town that I may preach there also that I that is where I came out and the King James Version says that is where I was sent so Jesus stayed in contact so he could get play-by-play -play instructions from the father exactly what to do imagine there were people, all these people were looking for Jesus and they would have detained him there. But he says, let us go to the next town. I wonder how he understood or knew what to do. I would suggest it is what the verse in verse 35 says because he went early in the morning spending that time with the Father so he could get instructions so he could know exactly what part of Tulsa to go and minister to and who to do it to. You know the, uh, the the idea of why why to if it's if we're the workmen doing it, you know why would we need to talk to God about it? Of course, I think fundamentally the issue is uh, that verse where it says, "Without me, you can't do anything." <laughs> and then the other, that's it, John fifteen five. And then of course, isn't it Philippians uh, four thirteen? Where it's, but with God, all things are possible. So you could see, of course, keeping that link open, like you said, like the pastor shared of. Uh, what, what is your uh, job description day? I remember even inspired writings where Ellen White mentions there's times where, like you say, God will direct you down to a certain street, down to a particular house, to a particular person that's been sending up his petitions. And kind of like the story of Cornelius was kind of like that, you know, where God said, there's a guy over here. And he, you could see, I think in Ezekiel, where you see a wheel within a wheel. And I was thinking all these angels must stay mighty busy with every person trying to surround them with circumstances that would try to save them to the uttermost, you know, and uh, all the, 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 the gears of heaven to make that happen, I bet would just bewilder us. Um, and, and another thing is, it's in Luke 18 where Jesus talks about the widow who kept persevering, and Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not faint. But the, the, the chapter before in Luke 17 tells us about the coming of Jesus. It says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the coming of the Son of Man, as it was in the days of Lot. So that is the context. It is a last day parable for you and I. And Jesus begins the exposition of that parable by saying, men ought always to pray. And then he says, shall not God even avenge his own elect? who cry unto him day and night. How long, O oh Lord? Day and night, though he bears long with them. Jesus says, I will avenge them speedily. But then he ends by saying, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? So there is an issue, a juxtapose, he wants to come, but there's an issue of faithlessness, and I think that's why we're looking at these issues. I don't expect everybody to, to agree with my uh, 
ideology or whatever. I don't expect everybody to agree with me on this one. But uh, first I will start off with a question. What was, how long has it been since Jesus, Jesus was crucified? Okay. Well, if I read the correct Bible correctly, it says that a day to God, a day to, uh, well, wait, how can I say this? Yes, okay. Like you said, a thousand, a day, a thousand years to us is like a day to him. So, he, in his thinking, what's our hurry? It's only been two days. A little over two days. You have a challenge? Yes. What are you worried about? It's only been two days. Hmm. Interesting concept. Very good points. That was. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> praise the Lord! <laughs> praise the Lord, everybody. He said, "Why do we pray to the Lord?" As a street preacher, I need the leading of the Lord. That's why we should pray to the Lord. The Bible says, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. Everything else he would add to us. We pray to him because we need him. God bless you all. I love you. There's also a promise answering the, the question, how long, O oh Lord? Second Peter 3.9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, <clears throat> as some men count slackness, but his long suffering toward us were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is why he's delaying. Isaiah 59, we just read, his hand is not shortened that it that it cannot save. His, he, he's, he hears everything but our iniquities. And like Pastor said, we're looking, shall the Lord find faith when he comes back to get us? Moving on. Oh, go ahead. Yes. And there's times he's addressing us as the earth. We are the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when he said, as it is in heaven, so as it is in earth. We are the earth because we came from the earth. We are the earth. There are times he's addressing the earth we stand on, and there are times that he's addressing us as the earth because we're the only earth that he's coming for. Yes, praise the Lord. He wants to fail. Yes. <laughs> that's right. All right. Oh, let's, let's move. We got to move on. Get back to you, brother. Um, let's look at the certain kind of hope, Monday's lesson. Early on, we established that hope is a desire or expectation for something to happen, but is there a certain kind of hope we, can, we should be keeping at the forefront of our minds? Matthew 24, Jesus sets the stage on what will happen before his second coming. He told his disciples, and he's echoing the same message today to us. To One of the things he said was, let no man do what? Deceive you. Then he said, if it were possible, false Christ shall deceive the very elect. So we have to be prayerful not to let that happen. Now, in this section... Remember, I told you I want to. Uh, uh, this phrase caught my attention. I want to elaborate on. It's called sanctified escapism. Did you guys remember reading that? Sanctified escapism. Let me just define escapism. You know what sanctification is? It's a setting apart. Okay. But listen to the the definition for escapism. It's the tendency to seek distraction and relief from unpleasant realities especially seeking entertainment or engaging in fantasy. Now, that sanctified escapism, you can find it in around the third sentence uh, where it says, the criticisms is that the focus on another realm becomes a form of sanctified escapism. It's right there in, that, in Monday's lesson. Keep this definition in mind, okay? I'm going to read it again. It's the tendency to seek distraction and relief from unpleasant realities especially seeking entertainment or engaging in fantasy. In Matthew 25, what is that chapter all about? 
that is the parable of what the ten virgins okay and we also have the parable of the talents in that same chapter and then at the end it talks about the final judgment in that same chapter what is the central theme of Matthew of all those particular parables you got the ten virgins the talents what's the central theme there preparation uh-huh what else you said wisdom yes the coming kingdom all right judgment having the Holy Spirit so you look at the parable of the talents what is Jesus telling what is Jesus message there in the parable of talents he has he given us all talents he's given us once you get into the kingdom you have a gift the Holy Spirit through the, through the Holy Spirit so if we go and say okay and, and, and you've been confirmed by, the, by God that you have this gift maybe you have a gift of speaking maybe you have a gift of singing and you just let that talent just waste away it, okay that is so and then you let the talent waste away what is that doing to you spiritually and actually yeah let me ask that question what is that doing to you spiritually if you let that talent waste away you said death. You just, you're not ministering. Because if you've heard of people, you know, don't, don't warm up, don't warm the pews up. You got to do something. That's where the works come in, that faith and works, right? Uh -huh. So the lesson talks about hope for tomorrow, and then it talks about hope for today. What kind of hope for today is it in this mean and cruel world? What type of hope can we give to the people today? We can say, yeah, Jesus is coming. He's going to put away with all this as hope for to what? Tomorrow. What about hope for today? What are we supposed to be telling the people, the least of us, telling them about hope for today? Can anybody explain that other than? I'm going to do what Jesus said. How readest thou? How do you read it? I want to hear from you, my brother. How readest thou? Yes. That's what I'm asking. Um, I think I think in this setting, it's it's very in, important to to be mindful that we're all learning, and so we want to make that a great learning environment. Um, for me, there is hope, the blessed hope. You know, the Bible tells us about the blessed hope. So if I believe in Jesus being the blessed hope, I can share this joy. You know, yesterday, I'll give you an example. I got a text and someone said, you know, please pray for us. Someone in, in within the family circle committed suicide. Um, so how could you infuse hope? How could you be there for that person? Um, and in this world of sin and, and, and all the blight and darkness, God calls us to be salt and light. So that is what Jesus, in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus gives us what we should become if we are children of hope if we are partners with him he talks about being salt and light um, and yes we will be persecuted so I believe God is calling for us to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word you know ministering to the needs of those around us um, gi giving help and hope to those who are despondent people who are depressed people with anxiety you know, so there are lots of practical things we could do on a daily basis and to buoy up their spirits in a difficult world. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Romans that Christ in us is our hope of glory. Christ in us is our hope of glory. We should carry that hope. We should live that hope because he, it's in him that we live, move, and have our being. 
and without him we can do nothing our hope is what we live by faith our hope is what we live by faith god taught me something 12 years ago when we realize how much we need each other then we'll be careful how we treat each other We give you Well, that's when Christ. So there's been many a, Well, we well, no, we we, we sh Yeah, we show them the love of Christ. There's been many people on their deathbed who fell asleep in Christ peacefully because of the hope that they have in the, that they had in their heart for him. Yeah, he, he, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Right, right. He met their needs first, and then he he bid them to follow him. So, yep. Yeah, um, that is what we are to do today. All right. I want to read this quote to you here. Bottom of uh, bottom of Monday's lesson is, is it starts with to focus solely to focus solely or even primarily on the escape going back to that escape escapism aspect of for the Christian hope for the future is to miss some of the deeper points Jesus was trying to make in other words nothing wrong with focusing on the second coming you remember the great disappointment what were they focusing on the second coming of Christ but God was trying to take them deeper into the scriptures right so we have to, while we are waiting, God is, is showing us, hey, I want to take you deeper and I want you to share with others what I am doing so that they can also have hope in me and follow me. Let's look at Tuesday's lesson. The resurrection hope. You guys know that song, we have this hope that burns within our hearts. Hope in what? The coming of the Lord where would we be here's a question where would we be if Jesus did not rise from the grave where would we be say that again no hope at all none well you're going to tell the atheists well they so the, the atheist doesn't believe in anything right I believe the best thing for atheists to see is a, a, a life that is living out what Christ is, has done for them. Okay? Uh, many times a silent witness speaks volumes. I believe that with all my heart. So why did Christ have to die? Let's look at 1 Peter 2.24. Why did he have to die anyway? 1 Peter 2.24 and it reads who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye are healed so he died he had to die because of our sins 1 Peter 3.18 just a page over says for Christ has also once suffered for sins that the, ju the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit so, the, so what was the significance of the resurrection was it a big risk that Christ came from heaven to come down here to live a uh, Really, sin this life. Was there any? There was a significant resurrection. If Christ didn't resurrect, it didn't right come to life. Then our faith in God would not. Well, we would have no faith in God. He He's alive. Christ is alive, and we're alive. If we die, we will raise when Christ comes. Like people in our family that have died. 
We know that they will believe us in Christ. They'll be back. They'll rise. Just like we'll, if we die, we'll rise when Christ comes. Yes, we believe that the, the death, that Christ is, did not die. The death, burial, and resurrection. He's alive. Christ is alive. The resurrection proves that. A lot of people don't understand it. We're the, that with Christians are the only people other religions don't teach. They talk about reincarnation. They, that's the only religion, Christianity, that talks about resurrection of Christ and people that are part of Christ. Yes. All right. Amen. That's right, brother. Amen. Amen. When you die, not Im not immediately, not immediately. <laughs> That's right. Well, well, if we if. It, Let's 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 move ahead. We got we on the time crunch right here, guys. We can we can go. Let's talk about it over lunch. How about that? <laughs> the judgment hope. The judgment hope. All right. That's that. This is Wednesday's lesson. We serve a God that is not only long suffering, merciful and compassionate, but we serve a God that will soon execute judgment upon every soul that has ever lived. Now, three angels' message. Is a more is more urgent today than it was a hundred years ago. You guys believe that? What does it say? Fear God and give glory to Him for the hour is what? Judgment is come. It's, it's happening now. The books are open now. Salvation is today. Okay. Okay. All this sexual harassment, these people, it's bringing to the light. Uh, the things that are in the news now this lady is going to jail because these rich people are paying for their children to get into college to up to uh, SAT scores they're paying not just thousands of dollars but they're paying millions of dollars she's going to prison for that is that the judgment that that we're talking about that's bringing to life the judgment here that these people, uh, <clears throat> they say no. So, uh, and then the, the the just the unjust in this is there's a movie star. She did the same thing to her children. Now is she gonna go to jail? But she's famous, rich and famous. So, are these things bringing into the light here on earth? Is that where we're talking about judgment? No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the judgment of God bringing to fruition the all the e well all the evil I'm gonna read Jude to you this is this is what the judgment's all about listen to this book of Jude right before Revelation this is what the judgment is about right here says verse 15 it says to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among men of all their ungodly needs the Bible says in Philippians that every knee shall bow before Christ when he comes every eye will see him those every person that's ever lived so he said he's going to execute judgment up, upon all and convince all that are ungodly no matter what you do I don't care if you gave millions of dollars to cheat I don't care if you st stole a bubble gum and, or whatever, murdered. If you have an unrepentant heart where Christ comes back, he's going to deal with that. Now, we can't judge a person and say, okay, you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. We can't do that. God is the only judge of the universe. But he also says here, uh, reading on, of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. 
verse 16, what is he talking about on these speeches? These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, in their mouth speaking great, great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Okay, so those, this is just part of it, but this is the main reason why God is going to judge. And then you turn over to Well, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But that's not what this lesson is talking about, though. Uh, one more verse. One more verse, guys, and we'll close. It's been a great discussion this morning. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 12, uh, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the, of the whole matter. Fear God and, get, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring, and this is the judgment uh, section right here. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. God sees everything. Can't hide from God. Whether it be good or whether it be, it be evil. Amen. So that is the judgment hope that we're talk, talking about. And like we talked about earlier, God is going to avenge those who have been oppressed. You know, all the slaveries and everything that's that's going wrong in this in this in this universe, in this earth. God is going to avenge his people. That's a promise. And that's that's a promise that we can stand on. Amen. Let's uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven. Lord, we're so thankful for your word to us this morning, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the uh, many uh, the conversations that we've had this morning, Lord, and I'm pretty sure we've all uh, heard from, your, from heaven, Lord. So help us to take what we've uh, learned and read to heart. Help us to meditate on these concepts and precepts, Lord. And most of all, help us to pray and be humble, Lord, in your, in your sight so that, we can, um, so that we can go home with you, Lord. Help us, most of all, to uh, to have more faith as we are ending the probation here in this world and also lord help us to share what we have learned with other souls so that they may be saved as well we ask that lord as we go on uh, the rest of this service that you will pour out your spirit upon our pastor lord as he brings the word and uh, lord bless us now as we uh, move forward now in jesus name amen <laughs>